when you want to tag your training data images for training and embedding? Well, I'm going to tell you. There's nothing more annoying than you got this super awesome open source community tool that everyone's using and a few YouTubers make videos on how to use it and everybody gets used how to use it and those videos are starting to trend and those YouTubers are like, yeah, I'm getting the views, but then they change everything around on the tool or remove features. This is my look of disapproval. All right, ignore this. I'm playing around with uh, multi-diffusion to get it to upscale stuff. But let's say we're going the, over the train tab. You got create embedding, you've got create hyper network and train, but there's no pre-process tab. And looking at my video that I made at, you know, at around the 17 minutes mark here, I've got source directory, destination directory, width and height, and then whatever is in that box. And then these multiple options down here, but the two captioning options are blip and deep boru. And back when people first asked me, in comments, like, where the frick did this thing go? I was like, huh? And I checked, and it was gone. And I was like, no. And I thought, logically, if I made it, and for whatever reason, I got rid of that tab in the training tab, logically, that's where it goes, because you're using it for training. But anyways, where would I put it? I thought, the extras tab. So I went and I checked the extras. Scroll down. There's caption. You can expand it like that and choose deep boru or blip. Both? You can have... What? You can do both? I don't even know. what. Huh? Well, so, let's try it out on this other computer. Again, I'm messing around with stuff. Me, when I've got three computers doing stuff with stable diffusion, and I gotta decide which one I have to stop doing that so I can film a video. I'm trying to get Ella Parnell, but her bajongabuzz are too big. But anyways, that's a whole other can of worms. So let's try it out. Let's go over to train... No, no, it's not in train! What am I thinking? Extras... But it doesn't matter what you put all here. You want to leave this alone. Basically, don't have anything in your upscale or options. None of this stuff checked. Go to batch from directory. All right, here's my Ella Purnell training data. And I have it tagged for training LORAs. When you train a LORA, you need to put the instance prompt, comma, and the class prompt, comma, before everything else. But with embeddings, that's done a completely different way. And you should already know how to do all that because you probably came here from that video. If not, you can click here to see my video on how to train embeddings. So I'm going to copy paste this path over to input directory and go up a folder and put processed. And then copy paste that path over here. And scroll all the way down and check the box that says caption. Expand that. Change this to blip. And press Control enter to process, or you could scroll up and hit this up here. And there it's doing its what's its whatever to do the things. Well, that part was it actually downloading the model, because it said 855 out of 855 megabytes. That's why that took a while, so first time you run it, it has to download that thing. Now it's done three images so far, and it just popped in another one, and there's another one. While this is running, I looked in here and it's still doing the thing that it was stupid at doing before when I made the embeddings video, which is like, with a serious look on her face. And I always remove those. But now it's putting names in some of them. Like Elizabeth Collins, who's that? Uh, what? I don't know who's... What? Carol need your... Is it doing the the thing where it randomizes a name for the tokens? There's this website, behindthename.com. If you put feminine, first name, middle name, first name only, and then put check mark next to random, and then all categories, or you could choose races, hit generate a name. When you put this in, Stable Diffusion will make tokens out of this, and every time you generate an image with this fake name, you should get a consistent face. Maybe that's what's going on? I don't know. But Daphne Fadarb? Fadarb? Seriously? It worked, though. Huh. Let's delete all of those, and I'm going to show you another tool that I actually i have been trying to figure out how to train embeddings and checkpoints in it. Haven't figured that out. I've done a few videos on how to use the LoRa tab to train LoRa's. Embedding trainings are in the textual inversion tab. 
For now, I still recommend using the training tab in on Mac 11.11 for that. But then you have this tab over here that says utilities. And this is the old GUI and this is the new one. Why I'm showing you that there's two different GUIs is because a lot of people are having errors in the new GUI and a lot of other people, while well, there's a Venn diagram and there's an overlap, don't like the new GUI for a lot of reasons. But it's utilities and then blip captioning for either one. Utilities, blip captioning. So in this case, I only need the image files to be over there and it's not gonna put, move them over there for me like the other process does. So I think I have to do a little jimmery pokery here. A little bit of jiggery pokery. Is that a technical term, jiggery pokery? Yeah, I came first in jiggery pokery. Windows button R, CMD. I'm not typing CMD up here and I'm not getting into that, the reasons right now. CD slash D, double quote, paste. CD processed. Now I need to copy all of the images and I already have them all processed into PNGs. I recommend that you have all your images converted to PNG before you train. And be sure to do it before you tag the images. There are multiple reasons for this. I created a tool to convert a whole folder of images all at once for you if you don't already have a solution for this. You can, con you can click the card above to watch that video later. All right, the command line is into the process folder and I'm gonna type copy and space. Go up one folder, drag this over, because I know there's a bunch of images in there. Back up one spot, hit backslash star dot PNG, press enter. Now I've got a folder full of image files. See, look at that face, so unique. It's not your standard whatever, that's why I want to train that face. Anyway, I digress. I'm on a tangent. Copy paste this folder over here. It's got all these other features down here that I don't know what they do, but it's amazing that Koya gives me the option to do that. If you want to see how to install Koya, it's a little involved, there's a lot of steps. I made a video and it actually covers how to install the old one if that's the one you want versus the new one. Or later on in the video, you can just skip to the part about how to install the new one. It's up to you. I'm not the boss of you. All right, it says blip loaded. It's moving along. Done, captioning done. So now we've got all the captions in there. Let's see what they look like. A woman with a choker and a choker necklace. That's not a lot of stuff. There's not much going on in there. DEL star.txt. Boop. Let's use the other Koya, the new one. See if it does the same thing. Number of beams. Like steel beams. <laughs> and it's doing the exact same thing because guess what? It runs the same exact code. It says a woman with a choker and a choker necklace. A woman in a bikini sitting on a deck. So number of beams means how many potential word searches or whatever to put. Let's try 10. Top P, according to the documentation I just read, means only allow the top percent most likely keywords to be used. So it's a range from zero to one. If I put a one there, it's gonna put 100% of every token word that shows up, even if it doesn't 100% match. And max length and min length, this is pretty good. This means a maximum of 75 tokens will go into the file with a minimum of at least five tokens. What's a token? Uh, one token could be a man or a man sitting in a chair. But we're not really sure. Sometimes a man sitting in a chair is two or three tokens. Let's just try it just by turning up the number of beams. Delete.txt's in there. Verify they're gone. Run that again. There's something here that makes me do my look of disapproval. This is my look of disapproval. It appears to be loading checkpoints from the internet before it runs. That might be why for me it's sitting at zero for a few minutes and then it finally goes. See how it's a URL and it just jumps from 0% to running when all the other stuff I've used download stuff first. And this is an error. The size of a tensor 10 must match the size of tensor B. I've, what? What does that even mean? That means don't change that, I guess. Let me show you another way that I've actually used a couple times. We can go to WD14 captioning, paste in the path, and you could put in undesired tags, but I don't normally have to do it. WD14 is a completely different algorithm. And the only other things in here that I've messed with are three boxes. Prefix, general threshold, and character threshold. Prefix means what do I want 
to go at the beginning of the file. For example, if you're training a LoRa, you need to have number repeats underscore and then instance prompt space class prompt. What are those? Okay, in Koya training, it does repeating on training on a specific image. Like if you have 15 images and you want the training to repeat it 20 times, so it's all 15 images, each one is trained 20 times per step. That number is at the beginning. An instance prompt is Ella Purnell in this case, but I made it unique so it doesn't confuse it with another Ella Purnell that it's already trained in a checkpoint or something. And then class prompt is obviously woman. I've gone over that in my embedding video and also my Laura videos. But if you look in here, you have to have the instance prompt and the class prompt in there no matter what. So if you're training a LoRa, you have those there. But if you're training an embedding, you don't. And down here, I've only messed with this once or twice. It didn't change much for me. I didn't go back to try it again later, but general threshold means how much to make generalized tags. Character threshold means how much to make tags just for the character. Like for example, you could turn this up to 0.5 like that and turn this down to like 0.15. So you get less of the general stuff from the scene and more of the character in the scene. And we're not gonna go too deep into it in this video, but basically there could be pros and cons to that. If you don't have tags for what's in the scene, it will think everything in the scene belongs to that character. For example, like black shirt. If I leave black shirt out of all my training images where I'm wearing a black shirt, then every time I try to generate an image of Robert Jean, it's gonna have a black shirt. But then we want it to be more character focused, more focused on Robert Jean and details of my face and my hair, I guess, I don't know. Then you need this to be higher and that lower. Again, 0 0.35, I don't mess with that really. This part is it just loading models. And every now and then it has to download an updated version of a model from the internet. And it appears it has to download this 388 megabyte one. I would rather it download something than connect to Google or wherever and run their model remotely. It says it found 27 images. Ignore the errors about Tritons. I've also seen this in comments on my Discord channel. No, no, Triton is a Linux thing. It's always going to give you an error for that. And then it just flies. It flies through making these tags, but then it has to buffer something and load again. It like does a few files at a time. Doop. See, it just did a few files. And then when it's done, it says captioning done. And you see all the different tags that were used. And then you can open it up and, and prune them as you see fit. However... I've got the Boru data tag manager, what's it? I open it up, hit file, load folder. It's a lot easier to prune your data by going through each one and then making sure there's no tags in there that you don't want. How does this work? And where do I get it? Hold on. Those are two questions. Give me a chance. Okay. How it works is that it, all the tags are separated by commas. You saw the other way, which is called natural language prompting. Stable Diffusion doesn't use natural language. That's the freaking paid for one that's on freaking Discord because they can't run their own freaking website. Mid-journey crap that you have to pay for and get spied on and get blocked from generating images by accident going, Oh, oops, there's... A woman's bajungaloos in that image. I never intended for that. I have to change this wording around. But how could you tell if they're just going to block it and it makes like, a, you know, a picture of a dude? And you're like, who's this dude? What's happening? And then they have a counter of how many how many no-no naughty images you tried to, to make and then they ban you. Screw that. But anyways, people have told me that they get better embeddings if they use the natural language from Blip and not WD-14. It blows my mind, like what's going on? Anyways, whatever. I think you should go ahead and keep using, where, where it go, oh yeah, blip over in the extras tab. I haven't tried XY test to train one with blip and one with WD-14, and it's like, to see which one makes it better in betting. Eh, cause I've been so busy training Laura's and trying to figure out how to train embeddings in Koya and all that other stuff that Koya has. Now for the section of the video that I call Shut up and take my money! In the descriptables of this video, you'll see a couple of links. One's to buy me a coffee and one's to my Patreon. This is my Patreon. I got three price tiers right now. 
and you get access to all my trained models, whether they be Lauras or embeddings or etc. So you can play around with those. Tier two, you also get documentation that I don't just give away for free. And every time I post up to social media that's generated images, you get those images as so you could drop them in to Stable Diffusion and see what the prompt was. So you can figure out Loras and embeddings or whatever I'm using because some stuff I get off the internet. And tier three is you get my actual training sets with all the, the training images and the caption files in there and the JSON file that I used to you know, that saves the configuration of the training. So if you really, really love me and you, you love all the videos I make, then throw me some dollar dues. And if you've already trained Loras, but you haven't learned how to train embeddings yet, learn over here, learn how to train embeddings. And if, you, if you're doing embeddings already, but you haven't started on Loras yet, well, there, there you go, there's that video right there. And then subscribe and, you know, Patreon. And, and I'll see you in the next video.